It's roster time. It's almost opening day, and Matthew and I are going to break down every roster spot for the 2023 opening day Chicago Cubs. Come in and join us, please. Our Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy, and you're tuned in to Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please support the show and be a part of the Locked On Cubs community by following and subscribing on all audio platforms. And you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion to discussion with you on all things Cubs. Today is a important show as we are two weeks away, 14 days from opening day on March 30th. And that is a big barometer here in spring training as we continue to build the runway towards the season. And with that two week mark, we are going to do an update to the Cubs opening day roster. We're going to project the entire 26 Members of the team, we're going to break it down. Uh, we're going to get into those final couple roster spots, both positionally and pitching. And then we also have a win total update from FanDuel uh, later on in the show. Sam, you look really good. Thank uh, you. We're getting closer and closer to baseball. I'm excited to break this roster down, including a, a very nice graphic we have that we borrowed from, from Lockdown Mariners. Can I break some, some unimportant news before we get into this? All right. Uh, I just like to announce that after the line I get eliminated, which quite well possibly could be, you know, tomorrow afternoon, I will be rooting for Purdue because Matt Painter wore a W shirt under. Oh. Did you see this? No. He wore a W shirt under his, you know, whatever pullover he wears during the games in the in the Big Ten championship, and he took it off. And somebody was like, "You got a W shirt on?" He turned around. He goes, "Always go Cubs, baby." What? Yeah. Oh, so, so we, we're going to become Purdue fans. So, so after our teams are eliminated in round one, <laughs> go right. Boilers. Wow, I would have never thought I would say that, yeah. but I, I guess I'm going to warm up to that as well. Yeah, I, I'll, I saw it. I think I saw it on Facebook. I, I got to share it with you. Shaka Smart might be a Cubs fan, too, if I remember correctly. So is Ronald Reagan. Okay. okay. that's uh, <laughs> oh, He was. This is your first time tuning in, folks. Uh, <laughs> we sound a little bit differently than these other programs. And, and, uh, and, thank, and, pra and praise God for that. Yeah, there you go. So we're very excited, as always, to be with you today. And thank you whenever and wherever you may be listening as we realize that the roster projection uh, has a lot of interest to fans and listeners and and really all the baseball community at large. And uh, so we're going to break this down. If, if you are watching, we do have a graphic. If you are one of our loyal audio peeps, uh, we're going to list everybody anyways uh, by position. So without further ado, here is the Cubs opening day roster as a recording time, as a press time uh, here at 827 Central Standard on a Wednesday evening. So we're going to go left to right here. And uh, I can the, leave, by the way, because no one can see me. So okay. if you guys if you guys don't hear me for about 20 minutes, I passed off. All, right. All right. Thank you for following directions. So uh, we have five starters here for the Chicago National League Ball Club. Yeah. Uh, Stroman, Steele, Tyone, Smiley, and Wisniewski. Uh, as we all know, Hayden Wisniewski is all but locked up that fifth starter spot uh, from Adrian Sampson, who you do not see in the right column there. Uh, under the relief pitchers, as we'll get to that in a minute. But right now, I, I feel, of course, this is all given health. That's obviously a caveat. Sure. But this is the five. No ifs, ands, or buts. Smiley, four. Wisniewski, five. You go righty, lefty, righty, lefty, righty. And I think this is a firm rotation, Sam. 
Yes, um, I agree. Um, don't really have much to add. I think that w- – would you say that that was the easiest thing to pencil in? That was the easiest one. That and catchers was the easiest. Yeah, well, catchers, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, good, good, good. Solid rotation. Uh, j- just to, to spice it up, if I were to give that an opening day grade compared to other teams, be uh, a, a C being league average, I think that's a solid C-plus slash B-minus starting rotation. Relief pitchers, there's eight of them, as there's 13 pitchers, 13 position players. Thompson, Alzali, Merriweather, Leiter, Wick, Hughes, Boxberger, and Fulmer. And I do think that there's six locks here. Yes. Uh, so the two spots that are available are the Merriweather and Leiter spots. We're huge fans. Of, I mean, I, I guess I don't want to be the spokesperson for the show, even though um, Sam Sam claims that I am. But we're huge fans of Mark Leiter. There's two. There's program. two. There's two guys on the show, Matt. We're huge fans of Mark Leiter on this program. Of course, you're the spokesperson. And I really think he should get one of the two spots. Um, go ahead. He Listen has great splits. Yeah. Yeah. He's almost a pseudo lefty as a righty. Um, he is on a minor league deal, cleared waivers, so he could start the year at AAA, yep. but he's having a great spring. Yeah. What do you think? So I think I think you nailed it on the head. I think there's I think there there there's three names on here that potentially could Cam Sanders. Uh 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 you know what wh- what do you think about him because yeah. I could I could see I could see him replacing Merriweather, Lighter or Wick. Okay. I I, I don't you know, I was the one that told you all all offseason there's no way Wick starts in Triple A. I underestimated how much they've upgraded this group. Okay. And, and you're telling me, I mean, in the in the, in the few innings that I've watched him each pitch, Sanders looks better than Wick, don't you think? He has. He has. I I I didn't have Wick as a lock in one of the more unofficial projections we had. I know a couple of months ago, and I and that was my fault. For what I'm reading, he's in there as a lock. Okay. And from what's being reported, from what the, the vibe that I'm gathering, I, I just think the Merriweather spot is even more open than the lighter spot, Sam. Do you really? I think Sanders is a candidate there. I think Anthony Kay is an outside candidate. Yeah, the I think. I Walker. Think- I think this Estrada. group to to me it's this group and then Cam Sanders would be the last guy but okay. I, I but 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 you know you read more about it than I do I just use my eyes. Well that would be deserved. I mean Cam Sanders would be deserving be a good story be a jolt of excitement. Uh Merriweather was a, a claim from Toronto and he doesn't have any options left. So right. similar no, to it's McKinstry, gonna be Merriweather. It's going to be Merriweather. I think yeah, I think he's booked for the opening day roster no options. I think it's going to be if lighter. If it doesn't Sanders. work out, well that you could easily turn that over quick. Yeah. Uh, but I do think Sampson might might make it over lighter. I don't. Um, I hope not, but I do think there's a chance they do that. You can't have somebody pitching big league innings that's given up 87 home runs in eight innings. Right. He's pitching so poorly. No, he need he needs to go down and figure out if he's tipping his pitches or something. Catcher, Gomes and Barnhart. Uh, we're gonna do an episode next week previewing kind of the new catcher era of the Cubs. Yeah, there's no need to elaborate. Um, no. But that yeah. was that was two locks by far. Two locks, defense first. Right, right, right. Infield, Swanson, Horner, Hosmer, McKinstry, and Madrigal. I think the momentum has been um, as misplaced as it might be. I do think Madrigal is almost all but a lock at this point. Um, I, I do still question the versatility of him at third, but I think he's going to make this club. And McKinstry out of options. Um, he's played some short this spring. He's played some left. So really, you could put him in that far right column if you wanted to under utility. Uh, but I have him making the team as well. Then you have three locks above him, Hosmer, Horner, and Swanson. Yeah. Um, right. I, I agree with that. Yeah, because I just don't know who else would be candidates in this. Spot. No, no. I'm going to make my point when, we're, when we get through the next group. Hap, Bellinger, and Talkman in the outfield. Um, it really seems like Morell and Velasquez are going to hit near the top of the order for the I-Cubs. That's a plan that was floated out since the convention, and I think it is going to happen. And so I think a guy like Talkman uh, then uh, gets that one of the last spots. 
And then utility and DH, you're going to see some of these guys bounce around and get most of the DH time, Mancini, Wisdom, and Rios. Yeah, I, I think the only thing, if you were to say what changes here, Sam, or, or, or what isn't, what the Cubs would do is it's just so Bellinger-reliant in center. They, they, they don't. Th- there is nobody on this roster that could play an average center field besides him. So it's like, what, what? If this is the opening day roster, what do you do when he needs a day? Who, you know, is it Hap? I mean, right? Like, like who plays center here? It, That's it, a it's great not, point. It's not Talkman. It's not. It's not Mancini. It's not Wisdom Rio. So my 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 point here would be maybe one less infielder, maybe you take out McKinstry or whoever. And it's like, that's the case for Morrell to make it is like, Mm -hmm. there there's like literally nobody to play center. If if something, now obviously if you were to get IL, you IL and bring somebody up. But I'm just saying from a day to day standpoint, you know, if, if he's, you know, knock on wood stays healthy and this is kind of the roster, you know, expect him to play like 155 156 games and then like i said like even if he were to miss like let's say they're facing a really tough lefty and they want to get him a blow i guess hap would be the yeah yeah because he's from the right side in the box as well yeah i don't know about talkman and center how he would project but it's definitely a thin spot yeah it just center field shouldn't be that thin Right. Well, and the whole outfield's thin. I mean, they don't really it is. It, they don't really have well and obviously well, we have Suz- three Suz- traditional outfielders. Yeah, the Suzuki injury messes with that. It's just like I, I think that util like to me, I think there's a chance you move wisdom over from utility DH to infield, take one of those infielders out, and then move some sort of morel type uh, uh um you know multifaceted outfielder because you can't can you start the year with just three act? I mean, Mancini could play right, right? Yeah, so could Wisdom. Uh, really? Yeah, he made a nice catch to his left the other day towards the All foul right. line. All right, so it's just center. Maybe they're just going to live with that then and then let's, just expect yeah, I, Bellinger to play a lot. Let's get into these final few spots uh, coming up next, including the possibility that Morrell is uh, not on this team to open the uh, the season right after this. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The NCAA tournament is here, March Madness, so it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. New customers are getting no sweat. First bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You can bet on everything from the money line to the point spread and more. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. Don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to mer- learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of Locked On Cubs. Welcome back to Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. And please make sure you're following the show if we are in your ears on Apple and Spotify. Um, As part of our content plans moving forward, that's going to be important, especially if we do audio exclusive shows um, uh, after games. And we'll we'll preview our content plans more uh, as we get closer to opening day. All right, the last couple spots of the roster here. And for uh, we we will reference the graphic again, but I, I do think the center field point is really good, and I I'm not my instinct isn't to question you know the Morel or Velasquez plan, you know the Athletic reported that way back in January. However, the Suzuki injury had a domino effect in which you have three traditional outfielders that are major league caliber. And I know McKinstry started and left the other day, but even oh. David Ross admitted that's not ideal. Oh. That was just a, a just in case if, if if they have to break glass. Um, can, and I can, still think you don't, you know, Mancini and Wisdom are 
really our major league infielders. Do you really put an infielder in the outfield? Can you do me a favor for one sec and cut the graphic and just catch my reaction to McKinstry in left field? You didn't know about that. Yeah, it's 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 he played short the other day too. No, all right, you can put it back. He's been in short and left. (laughs) No, there's there's no need for that. This isn't softball. He started and left the other day. Um, and yeah, and Rio, Rios is on this team, right, Sam? I don't know. I, I, I like, like, I don't know. Um, I, I think you're better at this than me. I, he I, should be. Yeah. It's a joke if he's not. I, I don't know. Where, I don't where, know. Where's, where's the power on this team? Can, can you let me know when you're cutting the graphic? I was having an itch. Where's um, the power? No, I don't know. I don't know, Matt. I don't know. It depends what they prioritize. I mean, you know, I think I think you did a great job with this. I think it's pretty. Thank you, know, you so probably, much. It's probably like Lenardi's bracketology, but there's a chance. I mean, he he got 67 to 68. You might miss one. Uh, I don't know. I he I don't did know. That well, this year, I believe so. Wow. I don't I don't know. You know, I mean, here here. Let's just do it like this. Let's do position. Hey, Chicago, play. what do you say? Let's just do position player locks. You correct me if I'm wrong. This is crap, man. Gomes, oh. lock. Right. Barnhart, lock. That's Swanson, only a 30-minute show. Swanson, lock. Horner, lock. Hosmer, an unfortunate lock. <laughs> McKin- McKinstry, Madrigal, not locks. Hap, lock. Bellinger, lock. Talkman, not lock. Mancini, lock. Wisdom, lock. Rios, not lock. So we got Rios, Talkman, McKinstry, Madrigal. I agree with you. Madrigal's probably close to a lock at this point. So but is Talkman. I don't. Yeah, I agree, but I I don't. I can't a hundred percent say they're going to be on the team. Um, it's probably like ninety five. But 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 all right. I, I, let's say Talkman and Madrigal are. So we got McKinstry, Rios. That's and, it. And and those two. And so could you you take one of those guys out and put in an outfielder? I think so. I, I don't know. I'm not saying they should do it. I, this is not right. my area of expertise. How to construct a big league roster? I just judge what I see. But but. That's about it. And when I look at this team, I see, I, I see a team that's going to have to be a sum of its parts, um, right? You know, and a team that really has to to, to win in, in complementary form. Defense helping the pitching, pitching, sure. all, you know, because this just doesn't scream out of beautiful team to me. Okay, well, we're going to get to the latest win projection in, in a few minutes, but Suzuki would help. You know, McKinstry, for all intents and purposes, actually is a lock because of that, not his options, but but maybe he gets traded. I, you know, it's hard to say. In spirit, you're right. Those those four should not be locks. McKinstry, Magical, Talkman, and Rios. I think Rios has plus power, especially from the left side. You know, Talkman is is a 32 year old outfielder. He played in the KBO last year. He's had a nice spring. Is you know when when Suzuki's back, he's gone immediately. I would think McKinstry um, just stole a base. You know Velasquez and Morel could both play center, as you're you know hy- hypothesizing there. Um, you know, no, I'm not hypo- but I'm but, not but hy- is it true? Is it? But 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 could it be true that okay, spots twenty three to twenty six? Yeah, you're going to have these discussions. They're just going to be organic because. Yeah, th- those spots are being fought for. So, so the yeah. person that wins, it's not going to be, uh, you're not going to put them on the billboard. No, and I'm not hypothesizing that. I'm just saying it's a possibility. Right. Um, I'm not predicting that. I, I don't know what to predict. I mean, it's it to, to me, it's kind of fool's gold with these guys. We're talking fringe, Sam Lenardi. We're talking about fringe big leaguers here. Uh, right. No, that's the, true, but that's let, part you know, of the fun of the roster projection. Mike Talkman is not an everyday big leaguer, and right. and, and we're and we're hoping that we that we catch lightning in a bottle with him for maybe you know, just twenty eight games. Yeah. You know, and 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 you know, the Cubs lead one nothing, top three against Cincinnati. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Killian two scoreless so far. Well, Morell struck to out. By the way, reflect on this roster and, and, and discuss maybe how many wins it reflects. Uh, FanDuel opened up at seventy-five and a half. Sam, if you do recall that, right? Yes. Uh, it has been potentially increased, and we're going to get to that briefly coming up next. This game's great.
Today's episode is also brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. As Sam Sign just said, we're really geeked out about our new partner and sponsor of this episode, Ultimate Baseball GM. Have you ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM? You can tell yes. I have based yes. on my roster projections. Well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play throughout the whole season, and lead your team to glory. You're responsible for three things. One, hiring the right coaches and staff. Two, scouting and drafting players. Three, navigating your franchise through free agency and all the ups and downs of a season. This is all in a challenging and realistic game world of Ultimate Baseball GM. Completely free and playable offline, so you can play on the go as you want. And when you want to, Locked On Cubs listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On. That's Locked On in all caps in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up in the Apple and Google Play app stores. Probaseballgm.com or in your app store. For Ultimate Baseball GM, let's start your dynasty today. Welcome back to Lockdown Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. The Cubs are now up to 77 and a half wins on FanDuel. Uh, why, the, why the increase plus two, Sam? Do we, do we know yeah, why that is? Yeah, because it opened low. Cubs are a public team, and probably a lot of people watched our show and hammered the over, which which, which, which drive the price up. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like half joking, but not. Um, I, I, got, lot, I got you. I think a lot of people uh, had the same reaction we had, that that was low and probably drove yeah. it up. I thought 77 and a half, 77 and a half, 78 and a half is what it should have opened at. Mm -hmm. And so that makes sense to me. Um, just, just a, a real quick thing here as I just scan as the Cubs are playing. I'll be watching that after we're done. Uh, 0 for 2 today for Madrigal. He's hitting a nice solid 276 with an OPS of 610. One walk and one double. Okay. You're not happy with that. Understood. Just, no, it's just hard. It's, for him to I've – I've said this. He has to, his average has to begin with a 3. For him to even be considered an asset – Right. No, I, uh, I understand the frustration. That's why and, that's part of the and, reason. Yeah. And look no further than Mr. Lock, Zach McKinstry, who has a base hit to get his spring average up to one three zero. Okay. That's a good spot to end then. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we're keeping track Mr. of Lock, Mr. Brooks Robinson, Mr. <laughs> Mike Schmidt, Zachary McKinstry. Be sure to hit that I'm subscribe joking, button joking. for Lockdown Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button on all your favorite Lockdown Cubs content. Feel free to give us averages as I do the outro. It was a uh, great Apple, graphic. Spotify, Amazon Music, and more uh, on the audio side. And you can drop us a text or leave us a voicemail at 312-834-4634. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Rios now make your second listen, Lockdown Fantasy Baseball. Win your league. By listening to Matt and Dom on Locked On Fantasy Baseball as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Well, hashtag hope for summer is definitely a thing. Hey, we're going to try to speak into existence. Before we close out, I just want to, and I apologize to our audio peeps, I just want to mime out Tucker Barnhart's average after his first inning base hit. 111. Ouch. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy, and this is Locked On Cubs.